My name is Adam Larson. My name is Lester Lashke. And we're both from the psychology department at Kansas State University. And we're also authors of the recent Journal of Vision article titled The Contributions of Peripheral and Central Vision on Scene Just Recognition. Now, scene just recognition is really important because throughout our everyday lives we encounter many scenes. And the first thing we, that we do when we see these scenes is apply a label to it. And this affects later cognitive processes, like directing your attention throughout that scene and recognizing objects contained within that scene. And what we are looking at in this particular paper is how each uh, field of view, be it foveal or foveal and paraphobial or peripheral information, contributes to scene just recognition. And uh, it's important to know that there are big differences, of course, between central vision and peripheral vision. So, for example, uh, foveal vision and paraphobial vision are very useful for uh, providing high resolution information and detail and also for recognizing objects. So to the extent that uh, high resolution detailed information and object recognition play an important role in scene just recognition then we would expect that central vision will be very important. Conversely uh, to the extent that lower resolution or low spatial frequency information is all that you need to recognize the gist of a scene, then we should expect that peripheral vision uh, will be quite good uh, to do the job. So we had a couple of conditions that we used in our experiment. The first is what we call the window condition, where we present information only in the center of the image and block out everything in the periphery. And conversely, we had the scotoma condition, which was the inverse of that. You block out everything in the center and only show information in the periphery. Our second manipulation is the actual radius of the viewable area. So in this case, we have our one degree window, which corresponds to foveal information, which is being presented, and everything else is being blocked from view. And of course, our inverse, our one degree scotoma, where we're blocking that central one degree information, foveal information, and we're allowing participants to view everything else contained with that, within that scene. Again, we have our five degree uh, window where we're presenting foveal and paraphobial information blocking everything in the periphery, and again, our five degree scotoma where we're blocking that central five degrees of viewable area and allowing participants to view everything in the periphery. In this condition, we're presenting an equal proportion of area inside the window and outside the scotoma and in our last condition, we're presenting more viewable area in the center of our window and less information being presented in our uh, scotoma condition in our periphery. Now, this uh, in central information, this is actually presenting much more information than our peripheral condition, which is not true in our central five degree and one degree uh, window condition. Uh, to tell you a little bit more about our methods, we briefly presented the images. First, we began with a fixation cross at the center of the screen. Then we briefly flashed the images for about 100 milliseconds. Then we had a blank for about three quarters of a second. And then we presented a one word label, which was our cue, until they gave a response. The cue could either match the category of the target. In this case, it says beach which matches the target image, so the person should say yes, and 50% of the time uh, the cue would not match. It would come from a different category such as street. Here are our results, and on our x-axis we have the radius of our image and degrees of visual angle, and our y-axis we have our percent correct. Our blue condition here represents the window condition where they're being presented with only central information and the periphery is being blocked. And the opposite here, our scotoma condition in red where people are being presented with information in the periphery and blocking that central information. And up here, this little gold dot represents our control condition where people saw the entire scene image. Now while looking at this, if people are presented with only uh, with blocking foveal information and allowing them to view everything in the periphery, 
there's no difference between that and our control condition, where they saw everything. The same is true for our uh, five degree condition, where we're blocking the central five degrees of an uh, image, and they're allowed to see everything in the periphery. Again, there's no difference between that and our con control condition. Conversely, if you only present foveal information, or foveal and parafoveal information, this is still performing worse than our control condition. Although you can say here that presenting that extra parafoveal information is actually uh, increasing their accuracy quite substantially. Overall, this is kind of showing us that peripheral vision is really important for scene gesture recognition, possibly because there's more of it. Now, right here, when we're presenting each image with an equal amount of area in the window and outside the scotoma, we see that the window condition is performing greater than our, win than our scotoma condition. Now this is interesting because right prior to this we have a crossover between our two conditions. This suggests that there's a smaller sized window with less visual information compared to our scotoma condition which will have a greater amount of area which is actually producing equal performance between these two conditions. Again, this might be suggesting to us that the central information is possibly more efficient at using this visual information than that peripheral information.